eight years ago, I was standing in the front of a town hall in Fogo Island. I was there to talk about six artist studios in the Fogo Island Inn we were about to make. The room is packed. I look around and I see familiar faces. Not faces that I know, but faces from my past. I see these old women with curlers in their hair that look like my grandmother. I see fishermen that look like my grandfather. I see little kids in the room that look like friends of mine I hadn't seen in years. I was a teenager when I left Newfoundland, and here I was standing in front of this room all by myself, and there was a million thoughts going in my head. I froze. I couldn't talk. I, I was overwhelmed by emotions. I realized I really, really missed Newfoundland, and I, tears welled up. Questions started bubbling in my head. Is this project at all possible? Am I the right architect for this job? And most important of all, will we disappoint these people? Finally, one of the guys I was working with, he came up and he put his hand on my shoulder and he whispered in my ear and he said, I know how you feel. Right there and then I realized that for better or worse, the project I was about to work on would define the future of Fogo Island. It would define me as an architect. Failure wasn't an option. So how did I get in that room in the first place? My background's a bit non-traditional. I grew up in Gander. I moved to the mainland when I was 16. I can honestly say it was the saddest day of my life. I studied architecture at McGill, and I actually wasn't so interested in school. I, want, I wanted to use my education as an excuse to travel. So I, I worked in Vienna, I worked in Berlin, I worked in Russia, and I, now I live in Bergen, Norway, and I ended up there while I was hitchhiking from Paris to China. I started work on a Monday, and then I actually found a place to live with two architecture students on a Wednesday night. That Friday night, they were having a birthday party, and I met my wife. <laughs> yeah. So I thought I was going to be there for six months. Now it's been 18 years. July 2006, I was paddling my kayak down the west coast of Norway, and the telephone rang. She introduced herself as Zita Cobb. I, had, I didn't have a clue who this woman was. She said she had an idea for a project on Fogo Island, and I blurted out, cut her off, and said, you know what, I've been waiting for this call for 20 years. That night, I paddled into land, I sat in a cafe, and I Googled who she was. Wow, and this is the best client I could ever, ever, ever get. The second thing, it was in Newfoundland, a place that I would love. I just dreamed of doing architecture, but I never, ever thought I would do. You know what, I would have paid to do this project. I felt like the dog that caught the car. That was a, <laughs> yeah. My job was actually to put another leg on the Fogo Island economy. Zeta Cobb and the Surefast Foundation, they asked me to make contemporary architecture, but to base it on 400 years of them living on Fogo Island. I figured out, I had needed to answer the question, what is a new Newfoundland architecture? I got my inspiration by looking at outboard architecture. I just loved these traditional houses and stages. They were small, they were fragile, they sat lightly on the landscape. They had this rough, rough beauty. They were quirky, and they were like nothing else you see in anywhere in the world. Usually though, when I make architecture, I have to study the people, the culture, and the place. Usually I'm the foreign architect. This wasn't the case here. I was in Newfoundland, I was back at home. All my memories and senses were attached to this place. So what I was doing, I was making an architecture based on my gut feeling. So we started off, and it was a very unusual process. Nothing about this project was normal. I can stand here all night telling you stories about what was different, but I decided to pick out four. And I'll try to remember there's four, because I keep forgetting that. There's, uh, the first one is where we try to work with as many local people as possible. We were all a bit uncertain about how good these guys were, to, were building, so what we did, we started out very, very slowly. So instead of building all six studios, we just decided to build one. So when we started construction, I flew over from Norway, and I walked out to the construction site, and on the way out, I caught sight of the long studio. It was right on the horizon. And I stopped up, and I said, this is beautiful. And I realized right there and then as well, that these guys, these carpenters I'd be working with, would probably be the best carpenters I'll ever work with the rest of my life. They would do a fabulous job. The second point is that we used models to build these projects. 
We, I, in my office, we, we always build models. I've been doing this since I've been in a little kid in Gander. So we would show up in these construction meetings, and then we would pass the model around. I'd be sitting there with about 100 drawings on my arm. Nobody looked at them. So what I realized that these guys, this is, this is how they learned how to build. Many of, the, many of the guys on the crew, they were, were boat builders. Boat builders didn't have drawings. They had these little half-scale models that they passed down through generations. It was completely unknown for me in the architecture world, but it was very comfortable for them. The third point, this is a bit different. We, we had to use technology to deal with distance. I was on the other side of the Atlantic in Norway, so the carpenters would send us pictures about once or twice a week, and because there was a five-hour time difference, we could make comments to them, send them off before they had to work in the morning, so we'd turn an eight-hour workday into a 13-hour workday. So I was actually spending more time on the construction sites in Newfoundland than I did on my sites in Norway. Every Wednesday we'd have these meetings. They would last from an hour to eight hours long. I, I still joke, four years ago I quit drinking alcohol because of these meetings, because they were just driving me up the wall. <laughs> so <laughs> to this day I will not drink alcohol. It was so stressful. We would meet with all the consultants or meet with the constructors. And there was people in, on those calls, there was people from New York, there was guys from Toronto, there was guys from, or women as well, from Norway, London, St. John's, Gander. We were all getting to know each other in this virtual world. It was a bit like uh, pfft, internet dating, for example. Yeah. So the fourth element, this is one I've always been doing, but it was particularly interesting on Fogo Island. We decided to put nature first and architecture second. So Fogo Island, you see these pictures now, it's this beautiful place, extremely pristine and you cannot destroy the landscape there. If you destroy the landscape on Fogo Island, it'll take hundreds of years for you to get it back. I can remember one day, first when we started construction, Zita's there in the construction hat, I'm standing right beside her listening, and she's telling the, telling the builders, you guys kill one blueberry bush, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you look at these pictures today, it looks like the buildings have always, always been there. The landscape's pure and pristine. The buildings can blow away in 500 years, but these, the landscape will be still beautiful. So these four elements that I was working with, this was, these were making my life easier. We were sorting things out. But what it, in the unusual process, like the title is, that continued. But what I didn't know were some of the biggest challenges were right in front of me. One of the scariest things about this, building this project, that I, it was extremely complex. And another thing, I was in my 30s, I was a young architect, any client in their right mind shouldn't have hired me. I was just too young to do this. But the, the inn, it was so complex, I wouldn't really call it just an inn. It had a restaurant, it had a bar, it had a library, it had an art gallery, and then it had a cinema as well, and it had a sauna upstairs. I couldn't sleep for two years doing this. It just, it was really, it was really, it was a lot, a lot to have on my shoulders. One day I'm walking to work, and I'm a bit stressed out, and I'm trying to calm myself down. And I say, you know what? This is not really a big, complex building. It's just a big house. So instead of having three bedrooms, it has 29. Instead of a small kitchen, it has a big kitchen. So what I was doing, I was this, it was like a blessing in disguise. I was convincing myself that this was much easier. So what happens today is that the inn actually has a lot of domestic qualities about it. It feels very warm inside. It feels more like um, a home than a hotel. Right in the middle of the process, um, I thought things were going completely wrong. It was getting extremely serious. It was week after week after meetings, and every time we would go to a meeting, there would be a new consultant there. It'd be just more and more serious. We just talked about technicalities and economics. We were no longer talking about like, the culture of Fogo Island, the heritage of Fogo Island. I, I was really worried that this would just be any other normal building. This bothered me. So for about a month, I was going around in my head and I said, you know, how can we make this building feel like Fogo Island from the inside and out? And you know, 50 years ago, everything on Fogo Island was actually built on Fogo Island. It's from Fogo Island. Somebody in the group asked, they asked the question, could we make everything inside the inn on Fogo Island? And we've been building out for, for furniture in Newfoundland for about 400 years. So why couldn't we? Why couldn't we build it all ourselves and just buy it, and buy it in catalogs? 
So we got the idea of inviting quite, I think there was 30 or 40 young professional designers from all around the world to come to Fogo Island. They came for a month and we called it a workshop. We called the workshop Outport Aesthetics. And the design brief for the workshop was actually a poem. The designers spent their m month on the island. They were walking around. They were meeting the local craftswomen, the craftspeople. They were me meeting the builders and the boat builders. When they returned back home to their home countries, they were asked to build one piece of furniture. So what they did is they didn't send us back drawings. They sent us back prototypes and models, much like we were doing ourselves. There was 150 craftspeople involved building these products. The products included... There was chairs, there was tables, there was lamps, there was even keys. There's only 2,500 people on Fogo Island. It's just amazing. There was a Scottish designer that worked together with a group of women. And they made all the quilts for all of the inn. The quilts were so popular that the guests wanted to buy them. So these same women now, they have a little business. So we were actually putting another leg on the Fogo Island economy. So the inn feels extremely special when you walk inside this inn. I came in my first visit. I was with my kids and my wife and I came over and it was just furnished. And I asked the boy the key to room 22. It looks out over Joe Bat's arm to the east and it looks out over the Atlantic Ocean. So I get the key and I walk up, put the key in the door, open up, and I just get hit with this weirdest feeling I hadn't felt in ages. You know what, it was the same feeling I had when I used to visit my grandmother around the bay. It was this feeling of familiarity, it was a feeling of warmth, and it was definitely Newfoundland. So I went over and I sat on the edge of the bed, I looked out over the ocean, and I just smiled, and I felt right. And it was actually the first time in eight years I could relax. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a great, great feeling. The Fogo Island Inn is actually a handmade piece of architecture. It has stories of the people that made it, and it's the stories of people that came before them. It has stories of great, great carpentry. It has, when you walk inside, you can smell Newfoundland foods, you can hear Newfoundland dialects, you can touch furniture that was made on Fogo Island. It's a building made with love, just like our ancestors made before us, and just like perhaps the quilts our mothers and our grandmothers made. So all of these elements were actually making this an authentic piece of new Newfoundland architecture. When I visit the inn today, I just see life unfold. It's, it feels so great. It's no longer about a building anymore. It's, it's all about life. So, to summarize, what did I learn? I definitely became a better architect. I learned to be a servant to the people of place of Fogo Island. For some reason, I learned to slow down. I learned to dig deep. We also learned on Fogo Island to plan. We've used, we planned from 100 to 500 years on Fogo Island, a very long time. It took a long time to build this building. It was eight years it took to build this building. Me and Zita and the, the guy Nick in the crowd here, we often joke around that the first five years we were arguing about what we were going to do, but it actually only took three years to build a friggin' thing. <laughs> so, but, those, but the first five years were extremely valuable because that was the time we took to reflect. Another thing I learned to do, I learned a hard way, to be, I can admit it, I learned to work with a lot of different people, all kinds of different people. But what we did when we designed and built this in, we created an atmosphere where anyone can say whatever they wanted without being looked down upon. Everybody was a potential guest in the inn, so everybody's opinion was extremely valuable. So, the inn opens. Everybody on Fogo Island is invited to come for free. One old guy shows up one night with his daughter. He's from Deep Bay on the other side of the island. It's probably the furthest away you can get from the Fogo Island Inn. He's the town skeptic. <laughs> Listen to this. He walks in. He's in the lobby. He looks around. He goes, I love this spot. A friend of mine heard him say this. And he goes, I'm so glad they made it old. Hmm, think about that. Working on this project is probably the best thing I ever did in my life, making this new Newfoundland architecture. It was an extremely unusual process. But what I'm most proud of is that we managed to build it old. Thank you. Yeah.